So why did you leave Egypt? When? Uh, when? when and that was 1961, to be exact. It was still the Egypt of Nasser? Yeah. Which you didn't like? Well, I didn't know whether I liked them or not. I didn't form a lot of ideas at that time. As a matter of fact, as a medical student and later on as a young doctor, I was full of admiration uh, to uh, what Nasser was doing, saying things like that literally means something like uh, raise your head in dignity, the, the ages of slavery have gone. So to me as a young person, as, an, as a very old person now, uh, I think that appealed to me a lot because I do regard one thing as paramount in life, and that was dignity. So why and did you come to England? Nasser uh, suddenly opened the floodgates and in the name of human rights, he said uh, everybody has the, the right for university uh, education. So we were 60 and suddenly we became 1,000. So quality and excellence disappeared. I have a question for that. Is um, why did you devote your life to cure and repair the heart? Well, it's a very difficult question, and I can answer it in many ways. But if you, uh, the easy way for me was when I was a child. My dad was a surgeon. I liked what he was doing, and then he lost his younger sister at the age of 22 during childbirth of heart disease, of a narrow heart valve. I went to him and said, okay, I'm going to be a heart surgeon, to which he said, oh, don't talk nonsense, you're not qualified to do that, you don't have uh, what it takes. I said, what does it take? And he said, organization, and you're very disorganized. He was right there. You consider your life like a mission? I don't know what the mission is. I mean, I think I do say to people, or to me, uh, why I'm doing it, because uh, success is very hard to define. And to me, it's not certainly not money, and it's not fame but it is a, a certain value and this value is definable by only you and therefore what my advice to people when they say how do I achieve success I say first find out what is your passion or your value and spend the rest of your life achieving that and then that is success indeed because you're happy you are famous for your research, and because you made one of the first heart transplants, how did you came to that? And you are one of the pioneers, maybe, of this change, right? What was it before, and what did you really change, and what, and what nowadays is changing? Well, things have changed dramatically. And what fascinates me about the heart, apart from its central position, it's so... Uh, complex in its own right. There are millions, I mean literally millions, of molecules which work in harmony for a purpose. And not only that, but it responds within seconds or fractions of a second to any demand thrown at it. That answers your question a bit about the importance of the heart, but also why am I fascinated that while I am a heart surgeon, but actually from day one I wanted to discover more about the heart, uh, because to be more effective in curing children, for example, or helping them, you must know the basic mechanisms behind not just the disease happening, but what is the normal, how does the molecules work together 
when I was appointed the uh, the first um, British Heart Foundation Professor of Cardiac Surgery, I filled my department 70% with basic scientists, molecular biologists, uh, protein chemists, uh, uh, tissue engineering, and people say, well, but you're a surgeon. You're supposed to be cutting. Are you working against yourself? I said, yeah, I am. I'm not really working against myself. I want to do my job better by preventing disease and understanding what I'm doing. And that has proved to be very fruitful in the longer term because now everybody realizes that uh, medicine is multidisciplinary, so a department of surgery having so many uh, basic scientists is just is the right way to go. And the molecular biology is proving to be fantastic because now we know that we are all the same, but equally we are all different. How many people, statistically, you know, how many people survive and how many die and do they Excellent. die less today? The technique itself is not the problem. What's much more important is the immunosuppression, preventing the body from rejecting a foreign body. One of my absolute heroes was uh, the late Sir Peter Medawar. Uh, Sir, Sir Peter is regarded as the father of organ transplantation, organ and tissue transplantation, because in 1952, a long time ago, he published a paper in Nature entitled Specif Induction of Specific immune tolerance. That means he showed in an animal model that you can do something with cells to stop rejection of an organ or a tissue. He did that because of uh, during the war uh, there were many people with burns and he wanted to transplant skin in the infection. Having said that, even the current immunosuppression, some of my patients and approximately, let me give you some figures. Uh, when we started transplantation in the 70s and the early 80s, um, we never thought that people can survive beyond five years at the most 10. Some of my patients have entered uh, the Guinness Book of Records having survived 32 years after transplantation. My second obs obsession in life is healthcare delivery. Mm -hmm. The massive inequalities in healthcare delivery. Massive. 